Praise the Lord, saints of God. Glory be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Oh, he's the exalted one. Oh, he's the enthroned one. Oh, he's the crowned one. He's the majestic one, the most excellent one. He's the one that we ascribe all glory, all honor, and all praise to today. Oh, glory to God. He's been given a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess to the glory of the Father. You know, it just glorifies God. It just honors him when we acknowledge Jesus as our Lord, as our Savior, as our Redeemer, as our Healer, as our Provider, as our Wisdom, Righteousness, Sanctifier, Redeemer, as our High Priest, Mediator, Advocate, and Intercession. Jesus is our all in all. And the Bible tells us, glory to God, that He that we are complete in Christ. Colossians 2 verse 10, we are complete in him. Oh, in Jesus, we don't lack nothing. We don't want nothing. We don't need nothing. Why? Because he's our something. <laughs> he's our everything. Glory be to God. Amen. Our rock our shield, our fortress, hallelujah, glory be to God, amen, amen, amen. Well, I'm so excited today, amen, for this opportunity, amen, that the Lord has given to us to assemble together, amen, on this precious day that, that he has ordained for us to recognize his, the birth of his son. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Amen. And he said that his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Amen, Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And of the increase of his kingdom and government, there shall be no end. Amen. Jesus don't have an end. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega. And the Bible tells us that as we look to him, amen, he becomes the author and the finisher of our faith. In Philippians 1 verse 6 says, he who began a good work in us, he will perfect it. He will complete it until the day of his return. Glory to God. So something good is going to happen us to us today. The Lord is present with us today to perfect and complete the good work that he began in you. So get excited today. Amen. Be confident today that the Lord has kept you alive. He has sustained you. He has preserved you to do something good in and through you on today. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, amen. I want to appreciate you for hooking on today. This is our Christmas service where we acknowledge the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, today we're going to have an encounter with Jesus for a change of story. So go ahead, reach out to a Facebook partner and friend, a relative, a loved one, Amen. A co-worker, get them hooked on to this service today. Amen. And while you're doing that, get your Bible, get your pen and a notepad so we follow along as we refer to scripture. You can write these scripture references down, go back over them in days to come and strengthen school and develop your faith. Amen. Glory to God. Are you ready? Are you set? Because the Lord said, amen, that all those who come to him He's going to give us rest. And as we learn of him, we're going to find rest for our soul. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. All right, let's get started today. I want to appreciate all of our leaders at Abundant Life Christian Center Ministries, our members. Amen. Our ministers. Amen. You are so dear to us and the kingdom of God. Lady Michelle and I 
We want to just appreciate you, amen, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, together, amen. Glory be to God. You know, all throughout this year, the Lord has ministered a prophetic word to us, amen, and that word has come to pass in all the lives of every member, minister, and leader of Abundant Life Christian Center Ministry. We so appreciate you, amen, for your partnership, for your love, your supply of the Spirit, your devotion to us, to the Lord, and to his people and your church. Amen. We love you so much. Merry Christmas. Amen. Praise God. And those of you who are joining us, friends and associates of the ministry, we appreciate you so much as well. Amen. Glory to God. We appreciate your prayers, your love, your supply of the spirit, your support, your giving. Amen. Glory to God. And so with having said that, let's continue along the lines that the Lord, amen, has ordained for us to follow in. Amen. Turn your Bibles, if you would, amen, to uh, uh, Matthew chapter two. And at this time, what we want to do is we've been led to do, we normally receive the offering, the tithes and offerings at the end of the service. But since we're doing it, amen, on Facebook Live today, we want to we want to receive the tithes and offerings at the beginning, amen, because Jesus has given us of his love and his life, amen. So we want to celebrate his birthday by giving him gifts, amen, glory to God. You know, when we attend someone's birthday celebration, we bring a gift. It's just the, the honorable, respectful, loving thing to do, amen. So if this is Jesus' birthday, amen, and we are attending his celebration, then we need to get our gifts ready, amen, glory to God. And our gifts to him need to represent our honor and love for him, amen, glory to God, amen. This gift today that we're ministering to him should say to him that we love and appreciate him, amen. Glory to God. Everybody who acknowledged the birth of Jesus in the Bible, they knew that they had to bring a gift. Amen. It's just the honorable and respectful thing to do. Amen. So uh, the address, uh, the way to give, it will appear on the screen right there. Amen. You can text to give. Amen. You can go to the Givelify app, to the website, alccministries.org. Amen. Or you can just mail your mini, your love gifts, your, your tithes and offerings into the ministry. Amen. And we'll pray over them. Amen. Decree the word over your giving. Amen. Glory to God. And, and uh, the Lord will make sure, amen, that you receive, amen, the correspondence return. Because the Bible says when you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, runneth over, shall men. See, God is going to speak to people, amen, to minister and give to you, amen. Now, the Lord spoke this to my spirit, amen, and he said, prosperity, amen, doesn't consist in your needs being met, amen. See, most people think prosperity is having their needs met. But true, genuine, biblical prosperity, amen, is when God uses you to meet the needs of others. Woo, glory to God. That's genuine prosperity when the Lord is using you to meet the needs of others. Amen. Glory to God. And so the Lord wants to minister to you grace, his help, his strength, his favor, his ability, amen, glory to God, to cause you to go from enough to plenty so you can be a blessing to many. Well, glory to God, 2022 will not end, amen, before you are receiving grace for plenty so you can continue to be a blessing to many. Plenty is your portion. That's your portion. Plenty is your portion. Now, the only way you're not receiving plenty is because you're not receiving the grace. But the grace is for plenty so you can continue to be a blessing to many. 
Look there with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Look at verse 6 through 9, or 6 through 10. Amen. He says, he that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man let him give according as he purpose in his heart. See how you want to receive bountifully. Well, why you want to sow sparingly? Amen. That's a conflict of the heart. Amen. Glory to God. And he said, let him, let him sow not bound, not grudgingly of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. And God, verse eight, is able to do what? Make all grace abound towards you so that you having all sufficiency in all things will abound unto every good work. Now he that ministers seed to sow will also give you bread for your food and he will multiply the seed that you sown and he'll increase you in the fruits of your righteousness. See, that's his commitment to you. So if I commit to sow, he'll commit to give me seed. And when I sow, he'll multiply and increase and take me from enough to plenty so I can continue to be a blessing to many. Amen. Glory be to God. Now notice here in Luke chapter two, this was the, the introductory of Jesus being birthed into the world. Let's see how the people reacted, particularly wise people. Amen. Now, Jesus said, amen, whosoever heareth these sayings about and doeth them, I would liken unto him a wise person. Amen. So wise people do what Jesus say. Now watch this. Notice what he said in Matthew chapter two. This is after Jesus had been birthed into the world and, 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 and these wise men, amen, they're looking for him. They're searching for him. Amen. Seeking him. Amen. And the Bible says, and when, in verse 11, and when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and did what? Worshiped him. Whoa, glory to God. Now what's involved in them worshiping him? And when they had opened up their treasures, they presented unto him what? Gifts. Amen. Gifts. What did these gifts consist of? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. Glory to God. So, amen, at any birthday celebration, amen, we are required to present gifts. Woo, glory to God. Amen. So let's do what these wise men did so they we can have the encounter with the Lord such as they did. Now, the Lord told me, he said, as a result of us presenting him gifts today, He's going to minister to us something today. Something special is going to be ministered to you by the Spirit of God as a result of you honoring the Lord on his birthday. Amen. Now, we know that, you know, different people have different ideas about the birthday of the Lord. But, amen, since we're here, we're celebrating it today. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. It's not the day, it's the person. Glory to God that we are acknowledging. Amen. Glory to God. So all of us are bringing our gifts to this person. And as a result of obeying him and giving to him, he's going to minister something back to us. What is it? Look at verse 12. Matthew 2 verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. I heard the Lord say, Amen. He's going to give you wisdom. Glory to God. And you're going to go another way. Amen. Poverty ain't your way no more. Struggle ain't your way no more. Defeat ain't your way no more. Worry is not your way anymore. Fear is not your way anymore. Jesus is sending you back another way. <laughs> Glory to God. Somebody say, I'm going back another way. Hallelujah. He's the way, the truth, the life. Amen. Glory to God. And he's sending you back another way. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you instructions. He's leading you, guiding you, directing you in the way that he wants you to go. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as a result of you obeying the Lord by honoring him with your tithes and offerings on this special day, on his birthday, amen, he's ministering to you wisdom and instruction 
that's going to cause you to go back another way. Amen. Glory be to God. Well, let's obey the Lord. Amen. The address, the information is there on your screen. Amen. God has made it so uh, simple for us to honor him with our tithes and with our offerings. And let us pray over our giving today as we honor the Lord on this special day. Father, we thank you today, oh, for the celebration of the birthing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the earth. Oh, what love you demonstrated towards us when you gave us your son. So we thank you today that we are recipients of this great gift, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are partakers of his life, of his love. And we thank you that the love that we have for Jesus is reflected and demonstrated today in how we honor and give to him today. Let our gifts minister to him uh, an aroma. Let it be a fragrance. Let it minister to him a sweet smell. Oh, let it be a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing in his sight. Let it reflect the honor and the love that we have for him in our heart. And we thank you that as a result of you receiving these gifts, oh God, you are ministering back to us grace, your help, your strength, your favor, your ability, taking us from enough to plenty so we can continue to be a blessing to many. So we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to honor you and your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with our tithes and with our offerings. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and given thanks and obeyed. Amen. Praise God. Glory be to God. Amen. Can you imagine Jesus celebrating? Amen. Opening up these gifts. Amen. Looking at, amen, our hearts and the honor that we have for him. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart is. Jesus sees that he has our heart by the obedience of us giving to him out of our treasures. Amen. Glory to God. Well, let's get into this word today. I'm so excited for what the Lord will minister to us today. Amen. On our New York affiliate service this morning, it was so powerful. Amen. As we minister to the New York affiliates, amen, on, uh, on Facebook Live and on Zoom, amen. It was a powerful word, you all. Amen. And I'm just believing God Amen, that he has a powerful word for us today. Amen, will you believe with me? Amen, will you stand with me? Will you expect with me today? Amen, glory to God. Turn on the switch of faith. Cut your expectors on and begin to believe Jesus to do something in and through you that only he can do that will leave a perpetual, ongoing, continual effect upon your life. Amen. Believe with me. Stand with me today in faith as the word of God goes forth today. Amen. Glory to God. Well, turn here with me in your Bibles, if you would, to John chapter 10. Amen. Now, we've already quoted Isaiah 9, verse 6. Unto us a child was born. Unto us a son was given. Amen. Glory to God. And so I want to talk to you today Amen, about a message the Lord laid on my heart to minister. Amen. And it's entitled, How to Receive More of the Abundant Life that Jesus Came to Give. Amen. The objective of, of God giving us Jesus is to receive him, his life, and more of it. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Amen. He wants us to receive Jesus' life and more of it. Amen. Glory to God. And so if God uh, was, 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 amen, uh, if he were to ask us, amen, what do I want for you the most? He would tell us, I want you to receive more of the abundant life that Jesus came to give you. Amen. <laughs> That's what he would respond. Amen. Glory to God. Now, let's look at some scriptures that indicate to us the importance and value of the life of Jesus. 
and the life that he came to give. Notice here in John chapter 10, let's pick it up in, in uh, verse verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. I'm going to go out of the amplified version. And John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, Amen. I, the thief cometh not before to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Why did Jesus come? That we may have life and have it more abundantly. The amplified version out of John 10 verse 10 says, Amen. I have come that you may have and enjoy life and have it abundance. To the full, till it overflows. Woo! To what degree and measure that he, does he want us to have his life? To the full, to the abundance, till it overflows. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. So our time in the earth should be spent in receiving more of this life. To the full, to the abundance. Till it overflows. Look here with me, if you would, to Ephesians. Let's pick it up in chapter 3. Now, I trust that you have your Bibles with you. Amen. Your pen and your notepad. Because this is, this is an awesome word, you all. It's really going to minister to you. It's going to stabilize you and fix you in Jesus. And when you get stabilized and fixed in Jesus, nothing can move you. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus said, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, doeth them. I would liken unto him a wise person which built their house, their business, their family up on the rock. The rain descended, the floods came, the coronavirus, the economic oppression, the uproars in the world beat up against it. It fell not. Why? Because it was built upon doing what Jesus say. Every time you do what Jesus say, amen, you become like him. Hmm. I said, you become like him. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 14, you are my friends when you do what I say. See, you become his companion when you do what he say. Amen. You become one with him and whatever can't overcome him can't overcome you when you do what he say. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now watch this. Notice in Ephesians 3, Let's pick it up in verse 19 out of the Amplified. That you may really come to know and practically through experience for yourself the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled throughout your whole being and unto all fullness of God, that you may have the richest measure of his divine presence and become a bodily, holy field and flooded with God himself. He wants you holy feel, flooded with him, with this life. Amen. That's what he came to give you. He came to give you life and that more abundantly. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now, there are four kinds of life. When we talk about life, what kind of life are we talking about? Amen. Because there are four different types of life. Amen. There is natural human life where people are concerned with their health and well-being. Amen. Then, amen, glory to God, there's manner of life, the kind of, the kind of life, the manner of life, the quality of life a person's live. Amen. And, and which is a status in life. Then there's the behavior, the conduct of life. Amen. But then the greatest of all, it's the eternal life that Jesus came to give. Amen. This eternal life that Jesus came to give, it sustains all other life. It preserves natural human life. It preserves and sustains behavior and conduct life. It sustains and preserves the manner of life. And most people are interested in the manner of life, the behavior and conduct, amen, the quality of life, the health, amen, and, 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 and the natural life, but have no interest at all in the eternal life that Jesus came to give, which this life sustains all other lives. 
Oh, glory to God. Your healing is in this life. Your salvation is in this life. Your prosperity is in receiving more of the abundant life that Jesus came to give. This life that Jesus came to give, amen, is the antidote and solution to all your challenges. <laughs> and that's why he wants you to receive it and receive it more abundantly to the full, to you flooded with it, to it, it overflows. Because this life that Jesus came to give is the solution, the answer to any life's challenge. Oh, glory to God. If we'll just receive what God want to give, oh, glory to God. Amen. Everything else will come with it. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Now watch this. Notice here in Romans. Romans, amen, chapter 10. Well, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 5. Look at Romans chapter 5, amen. Let's pick it up in verse 10, Romans 5, verse 10. The Bible says, for when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Amen, everything that you need to be saved from Amen. Glory to God. You get saved from by receiving this life that Jesus came to give. Woo! Glory to God. It'll save you from sickness. It'll save you from disease. It'll save you from poverty, lack, worry, and fear, and anxiety. Amen. Glory to God. So your time in the earth should be spent, amen, receiving more of this life that Jesus came to give. Amen. This life, amen, has the sufficiency in it to save you from any and everything. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. Notice what he said. Amen. In verse 10, we are saved by his life. We are saved by his life. And sometimes when sin embarks upon you, things that you can't seemingly shake loose from, Amen. To incarcerate you, keep you bound, living in condemnation. Amen. And in fear. Amen. The answer, the antidote to any sin challenge is this life. Amen. Let me show you here. Look there with me in Romans. Amen. Chapter six. Well, let's go to Romans chapter eight. Let's pick it up in verse three. Amen. The Romans chapter eight, verse three. Amen. Well, let's go to verse two. For the law of the spirit of life in, well, let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Verse 2, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. What has this law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus done for me? It made me free. Made me free from what? Sin, from condemnation, from fear, from guilt, from shame. It's all in this life that Jesus came to give. Woo! Glory be to God. Amen. Woo! The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus came to set you free. How is he going to set you free? By receiving more of his life that he came to give. Every requirement in the Bible Amen, was written to this life. Every requirement in the Bible is fulfilled by this life. Amen, glory. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's him working in you, both willing and desiring. Amen, and fulfilling his good pleasure. Amen, this is the life, amen, that Jesus came to give, and this life is the antidote and solution to any of life's challenges. Oh, glory to God. Amen. And that's why we should be people of the word, because when you engage this word, you engage his life. Amen. Notice there. Amen. Glory to God. In John 6, 63, he said, the flesh profits nothing. Amen. It is the spirit that quickeneth. And the words that I speak unto you, what are they, Jesus? They are spirit and life. See, they reproduce my life in you. Woo! That's why we have to be people of the word. 
He told the disciples in Acts 5, 20, go into the streets and in the temple and preach all the words that pertain to this life. His word is life. Amen. And when you receive the word, you are receiving his life. John chapter one, verse one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word, verse 12, came unto his own, but his own received him not. But to many as received the word, amen, what happened to them? He gave them power to become sons of God. Woo, glory to God. His life is connected to his word. His life is connected to his spirit. Amen. His life is connected to his love. Woo -hoo -hoo. Every time you walk in love, you're receiving more of this life. Every time you walk in the spirit, you're receiving more of this life. Amen. Glory to God. Now, look here with me to Luke 18. Amen. See, a lot of times we, 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 we're seeking God for for something other than he wants to give. We're seeking him for the lesser good instead of the greater. And if we'll petition him for the greater good, the lesser good is connected with it. Amen. And he wants us to have this life and have it to the full, till it overflows, till we're flooded with it. Why? Because this life that Jesus came to give is the antidote, the answer to any other challenge in life. Woo, glory to God. And see, most people, amen, they are pursuing healthy life. They are pursuing a certain status in kind of life. They are pursuing a behavior and conduct when they need to be pursuing, amen, this eternal life that Jesus came to give. Woo, glory to God. Now watch this, even this rich young ruler in Luke 18, let's pick it up in verse 18. The Bible says there was a certain ruler who asked him saying, good master, what must I do to eat? to obtain eternal life. Now, this, he had health, he had conduct, and he had a good quality of life. But he knew that something was missing. What was it? This eternal life. Woo, if we just had much sense as this ruler had. Woo, glory to God. He said, these other life, they ain't sustaining me. They ain't fulfilling me. Woo, they ain't completing me. Ooh, even though I got good status, even though I'm healthy, even though I got good conduct, amen, I'm missing, amen, the quality of life that only you can give. What must I do to inherit it? What must I do to access it? What must I do to receive it? Notice what he's after, y'all. Amen. That's what I tell every rich person, every person of wealth and notoriety. I tell them, make sure you get this life. Woo, because all that other ain't going to make sense without this. Amen. Jesus said, amen, in, in Matthew 16, around in verse 26, he said, what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? He that love his life, going to lose it, but he that loses his life for my sake will gain it. Woo, what kind of life he talked about gaining? Woo, the eternal life of the eternal God himself. The life that lives itself. Ain't no death in this life. Woo! Glory to God. Ain't no guilt, no shame. Ain't no fear in this life. Woo! The only thing you're going to find in this life that Jesus came to give is God. Woo! And whatever can't overcome God can't overcome you. Why? Because you are receiving this life that Jesus came to give. Now notice this boy. He said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 19, Jesus said, why callest thou me good? There's only one good, that is God. Thou knowest the commandment, do not commit adultery, kill, steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. Verse 21, and he said, all these things have I kept from my youth up. Amen. Yet he had quality of life, healthy life. He had a good manner of life but he didn't have eternal life. And watch what Jesus told him. And he says, and now when Jesus heard these things, he said, you lack of thou one thing. Whew. Amen. Go sell all you have, give it to the poor. Amen. And then come follow me. See, Jesus wasn't trying to deplete him of his funds. He was trying to get him, amen, to unhook 
from what was keeping him from following him. Amen. See, he valued, amen, his, his resources over what Jesus could do for him. And Jesus wanted him to see that he could take care of him better than he could take care of himself. <laughs> Anything, amen, that's keeping you from following Jesus, Jesus requires you to sell it off because it's going to prevent him from taking care of you like he came to do. Oh, glory to God. It's going to connect you with a lesser provision and cause you to forfeit the greater provision. Mm. Glory to God. Now watch this. Amen. Now, Jesus told him, you lack us one thing. Go sell all you have. Distribute to the poor. Then come follow me. Now I want to give you four ways in how to receive more of this abundant life that Jesus came to give. Amen. Now, if you're not born again, if you're not saved, amen, that's the entryway into this life. You must be born again. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave who? His only begotten son. For what? That whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have, have what? Everlasting life. That's how you get this life. Amen. Through the new birth. You receive it in its initial form and degree at the new birth. Now, you got to know the difference between Jesus dying for the whole world, amen, and saving, amen, those who believe. He died for the whole world, but he only saved those who believe. And in order for you to believe, you have to acknowledge him as the penalty, atonement, and sacrifice for your sin. See, that's the very thing that separated us from God, sin. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, amen, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is in Christ Jesus, eternal life, amen? So what unites us, what separates us from God is sin, what unites us is Jesus and his life. So you have to acknowledge him as the atonement and penalty for your sin. You have to repent for all the times he came to you, but you rejected him. Amen. Then you have to ask him to forgive you, and he will. Amen. Then you have to ask him to come in your heart and save you, and he will. Amen. But he can only save you when you believe. Believe what? That he's the son of God, who God sent to die on the cross for your sin, and that God raised him from the dead, seated him at his own right hand side. If you confess and believe that, according to Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, God will save you. Whew. Glory to God. Come on, pray this with me right now. Those of you who are not sure if you're born again, not sure if you're saved, I'm going to ask you a question. If you were to die right now, where will you go? I don't know, Pastor Mike. I'm not sure. I want to go spend forever with Jesus. Would you pray? Yes. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin, and I ask you to forgive me, and I acknowledge you as the Son of God as the Christ of God, the one who he sent to die on the cross for my sin. I believe on the third day, God raised you from the dead and now you're seated on his right-hand side. You're listening to me, Jesus, Come in my heart and save me. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Now teach me how to please you and honor you and serve you with this life that you came to give. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. According to 2 Chronicles, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. All things are of God. Now you are of God. You're in his family. He's your father and you his child. And he put his Holy Spirit in you, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 15, to testify to you that you are his child. Woo! You got that witness in you now. Amen. 
See that confidence come in there. See that joy. See that peace. Woo! Glory. Welcome to God's family. Listen, you need to call the church. That address, phone number on your screen. Someone will call you back. Amen. And minister, Father, till you give you some materials to help you get off in this Christian journey. Amen. Get a good start. Get a good foundation up under you. Amen. I look forward to seeing you in church. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's get back over here. Four ways in how to receive more of the abundant life that Jesus came to give. Amen. Now notice his life consists, amen, of his word, of his spirit, and of his love, and of faith. Amen. Glory to God. See, all of that is in his life. His, his, his love, amen, his spirit, his faith, his grace, everything that he is is in that life. Amen. Glory to God. Now, let me give you four ways in how to receive more of it. Because remember, he wants you full of it. Amen. And to the degree that you're full of this life, that's the degree that he can fulfill every requirement in the Bible. That's why when you read 1 Peter 1, 15, he said, be ye holy as I'm holy. And you're like, oh, I'm going to do that. And then you read Matthew 5. Verse 43 through 48, amen. You've heard that it's been said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemy. Pray for him, bless him, do him good. Oh, how am I do that? This life. <laughs> See, the, these commandments and requirements weren't written to you. They were written to the life of Jesus that's in you. Philippians 2, 13, for it is he who is at work within you, both willing and doing of his good pleasure. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, it's this life in you that want to go out and meet these requirements. And if you don't let this life in you meet that requirement, you're going to live in condemnation. You're going to live in fear and guilt. Amen. Jesus is appealing to his life in you. And he wants you to receive more of it so you can meet those requirements. Because these requirements and promises and commandments were written to the life of Christ that's in you. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you got to receive more of this life. Amen. So you can keep living in the spirit. Amen. We walk in the spirit. Amen. We don't fulfill the lust of the flesh because we living in this life. Amen. Now watch this. Notice here, the way I receive more of it. Number one, I have to come to Jesus. Amen. John uh, 6, 37, all that come to me, in no way will I turn them back. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. See, I had to come to him. Amen. Look there. Amen. In Matthew 11, verse 28. Amen. Come unto me, all ye that labor, heavily laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me and you'll find rest for your soul. Woo, glory. See, we have to come to him. Come to him. Amen. Not to, to religion, not to, to tradition, but to the person of Christ. Amen. See, see, you're coming to him. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Number two, you got to request more of this life. Amen. You have to request his help. Amen. Glory be to God. Everybody who came to, to Jesus in the Bible, they came to him and requested his help. Amen. Glory to God. Number three. Amen. You got to accept his treatment. Woo! That's why people mess it at. See, they come to him, they request his help, but they don't accept his treatment. Like this rich young ruler in Luke 18, Jesus told him what to do to inherit eternal life. But the Bible say he went away sorrowfully. See, he didn't re accept Jesus's treatment of his case. Amen. Glory to God. Look at the 10 lepers in Luke 17, starting in verse 11. They came to Jesus requesting his help. And look at his treatment. Go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says, as they went, they were healed. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. See, just like going to the doctor. We go to the doctor. We come to him. Amen. We request his help. But then he write us a prescription and say, go get this filled. And we say, ah, nah. 
See, you do no good to go to him if you're not going to accept his treatment. Amen. And when he tell you in order for me to answer your prayer, you're going to have to forgive those who you have out against. Mark 11, verse 25, when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against it. For if you forgive, your father forgive you. But if you don't forgive, it won't be forgiving you. See, we got to accept his treatment in order to have our prayers answered. Amen. Glory to God. Ain't no sense of coming to Jesus if we're not going to accept his treatment. We're going to argue with him. Oh, that ain't the best way to deal with No, wait a minute. Amen. So the way to receive more of this life that Jesus came to give is to come to him, request his help, and receive his treatment of my case. Woo, glory to God. Amen. And then the fourth way, the last way. Oh, glory to God. Spirit of God put this in my heart. Amen. He said the, 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 the next way to receive more of this life that I came to give, he said, is by continually inquiring of me, inquiring of me for it, asking me for it. He said, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. To everyone that asks, receive, to everyone seek, find, to everyone that knocks, the door shall be opened. Woo, glory be to God. Amen. See, we should daily inquire of him. Lord, give me more of this life that Jesus came to give. Woo, give me more of it. That was David's secret. Amen. In Psalms, amen, 119. Amen. We see, amen, about 25 verses in that 176 verse chapter. Amen. David, 25 times or more, ask the Lord, quicken me. Give me more of your life. Oh, glory to God. He got more of it, didn't he? Amen. He spent his life asking the Lord, inquiring of the Lord of more of the life that he came to give. And that's why he never lost the battle. That's why he overcame every obstacle, every barrier, every enemy that stood in the way. That's why in Acts 13, verse 22, we find God testifying of David that he was a man after his own heart. That fulfilled all of his will. Why? Because he was inquiring of the Lord to give him more of this abundant life that Jesus came to give. Woo! It's the antidote. It's the answer to every amen challenge in life. Woo! Glo it sustains all the other lives, natural human life, manner of life, behavior. Amen. Glory to God. This eternal life that Jesus came to give is the life of the eternal God himself. Woo! And when you receive it, more of it, oh, it fulfills every requirement, every promise, every commandment in the Bible. Woo! Glory to God. It's the life that Jesus came to give living in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we get more of this life by coming to him, by requesting his help, amen, by accepting his treatment and asking for more of it. Oh, glory to God. I trust that this message has ministered, amen, Christ Jesus and his life and more of it to you today. Amen. I'm so excited for what the Lord is doing, amen, in the lives of his people. Amen. Glory to God. Listen, we have some exciting things coming up at the ministry. Go to the Facebook page. Look over the, amen, the things that, amen, that God has programmed for us to do. Amen. Believe with us. Pray with us. Stand with us. Get involved with us. Amen. Glory to God as we commit ourselves to advance his kingdom and his interests in the earth. Amen. Glory to God. I'm looking forward, amen, to closing this year out. Amen. On a prophetic wave. Amen. Our word for this year, amen, from the Lord is receiving grace for continuance in our settled state in Christ Jesus. This year will not end before everything that's an issue to you is settled. <laughs> Jesus came to settle you in him. Amen. Glory to God. So continue to stay hooked up, receiving this word. 
Amen. Glory to God so you can continue to receive more of this abundant life that Jesus came to give. I'm excited. Amen. For our New Year's service that's coming up, we're going to release the prophetic word for 2023. We're looking for all of our members. Amen. All of our leaders and ministers to be at that service. It's going to be so powerful. Amen. Again, I want to appreciate every one of you who have hooked on to this word today. Amen. It's powerful. Amen. Receiving more of the abundant life that Jesus came to give, receiving it in his sufficient measure, in his sufficient degree. Amen. And to my entire complex being, spirit, soul, and body is flooded, permeating with this life. Amen. Well, amen. Don't forget, amen, if you forgot to or didn't get to give or sow into the ministry or give to the Lord to celebrate his birthday on today, go ahead and do that. Amen. Before we close out, amen. Glory to God. This is his birthday. Amen. And he requires those who celebrate to open up their treasures and give him gifts, just like the wise man did in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. Amen. Glory to God. Well, I appreciate you. Love you so much. It's our prayer to our Heavenly Father that God's, our Father's richest and best, be yours. Merry Christmas.